Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Adam here from The Cook's Edge. Today we are going to be doing our very first sharpening demonstration in our new setup. So I thought we would just start from the start and do some very basic knife sharpening with you today. Today we are going to be sharpening the very first secondary bevel on this Hatsukukuro 210 millimeter Gyuto. This is a store demo knife, so we've been using it in the store as well as at home, and it's gotten quite dull. It's all right, but you can see there's it's got quite a bit of resistance through the paper, so we just want to remove that old fatigue steel and expose some new steel and then refine the edge. We are also going to be doing a giveaway with this uh, at the end of this video. So watch till the end and you can win some of the product that we are going to be using today. When I was working as a cook and a chef, I had three stones with me and they took care of all my needs. And it's really all anyone ever needs for resharpening any knife is three stones, a coarse stone, a medium stone, and a fine stone. Today we are going to be starting on the coarse 320 grit stone from Suhiro. We've chosen this stone because the knife is pretty dull. We can remove a lot of material with this stone if we want, depending on how much pressure we apply to the knife. So we've had this stone soaking until it basically stops bubbling. Usually it's around 20 or 30 minutes. We always flatten our stones before we go. It's very important to keep your stones flat. This will ensure that we have a nice even bevel. I always like to round the corners off too. And today I'm using an Atoma plate for flattening, but you can also use these little handheld stones as well. For our angle, we want to sharpen this knife at around 15 degrees. If you want to use the coin trick so that you can get a visual, that's always a good one. Each nickel represents five degrees. So if you set up three nickels like that, it'll give you an idea of around what you want to sharpen. I always say to people and tell my students or new employees that hitting exactly 15 degrees is not as important as picking an angle and sticking with it. People get really hung up on whether or not they're sharpening exactly at the manufacturer's suggested angle. I think it's more important you just figure out a comfortable angle and sharpen at that consistently. So I'm going to be starting on the outside of the knife because that's my routine. You can start on either side, but this is the way I start. We're going to break this knife down into three sections. We're going to first sharpen the heel section until we f can feel a consistent burr all along the section. Then we're going to move to the belly and then the tip. I use this finger for holding the correct angle or for steadying my angle. My thumb will apply pressure on the heel and these two fingers are going to travel up the knife as I sharpen on and I'm going to zero in on the spot that I want to sharpen and remove steel with these two fingers. We always like to keep the knife well lubricated with tons of water. That's very important. And we're just going to go. So we always like to keep the knife on the stone while we sharpen. This will help build up muscle memory so we can hold that consistent angle. We never want these two fingers to come off the stone like that. That's when we can run into injuries because they could slip and when you come back, you'll slice the top of your fingers off. So we hold the knife on the stone and go back and forth. My outward strokes are actually having more pressure than when I'm coming in. The stroke in is just for muscle memory and consistency purposes. So we're just going to move it back and forth. 
until we feel a little burr pop up. And then we can just start moving on down the knife. It's important to do lots of checks with your thumb and also check it in the light. When you start to expose new steel, it'll start reflecting a little bit differently in the light. I can feel a consistent burr all along this section of the knife. So now I'm gonna to move to the belly of the, sec of the knife. Again, I'm applying a little bit more pressure when I'm going away from myself. And I can feel a consistent burr all along the first two sections. So now we're gonna to move toward the tip of the knife. As we move up to the tip of the knife, we're going to have to start angling our elbow into the air. It's not going to feel very natural, but it must be done in order to, to follow along the geometry, the edge geometry. As we get closer to the tip, it's going to go way up in the air and it's not going to feel very, very normal at all, but You'll have to get used to it. We're almost creating a little cavern in this stone here, or a little canyon, I should say. Once I have a consistent burr all along the edge, we're going to flip it over using the same hand. We're going to sharpen the other side of the knife now. Starting at a 90 degree angle this way, we're just going to start sharpening the heel section just like the other side. So this time, these two thumbs are gonna steady the knife. This finger is gonna apply pressure on the heel. And then these two fingers, just like the other side, are gonna travel up the knife as I sharpen. So the only reason why I'm lying at 90 degrees and not sharpening like this is because I can't hit that same angle right in this little section right here. So we, when we start on this side, we're just starting at 90 degrees. So for this side, we're actually going to apply more pressure when we come towards us. And the stroke out is for consistency and muscle memory purposes. So let's get it. We feel for burr. Now we can switch back to the 45 degrees this way and keep sharpening. Always checking, doing that light test and feeling for burr. There's a pretty consistent burr all the way up. Now we're gonna start sharpening the tip. And just like the first side, we need to start angling the knife way up in order to follow along that edge We check to make sure our bevels look as even as possible on this 50-50 ground knife. They're looking pretty good. And I can feel a consistent burr all along the edge. So we're going to strop the knife now on the stones and try to clean up that coarse burr. We're going to start at the tip on the very first side. We raised a burr on this side, then we raise a burr on this side. Now we just want to try to clean it up. So starting at the tip on the first side where the burr is, we're just going to do a consistent long stroke twice. That should clean it up all on this side. And it probably popped a little bit back up on this side. So we're going to lay the knife flat. Just raise it up ever so slightly and with the weight of the knife, we're going to pull that burr off. That should pretty much clean it up, but there's always going to be 
some micro burr on there just from that coarse stone. And this is where we, the honing rod comes in. After the coarse stone is when we use the white honing rod. The white honing rod is a little bit more coarse than our black honing rod and it does a good job at cleaning up that uh, rough burr after the coarse stone. So we just put the honing rod flat down on a surface. You can use a towel just in case you slip. And basically we're gonna picture a matchbook between the, the knife and the rod. And we're gonna hold the same angle around 15 degrees and pull it from the heel down to the tip. And we only need a couple of light passes And then we test our knife in between stones to make sure we're on the right track because at this point, your knife should be sharp enough to use. But if you were to use it, it would be really toothy on the cutting board and wouldn't feel nice. So we can tell we're on the right track because it's cutting through the paper nicely but it's still making kind of a loud sound. So we can also see little bits of paper all along here because it's still got that coarse edge. So now we just want to move to the medium stone to start smoothing it out. Today our medium stone is a Cirax, or sorry, the Suhiro Cirax 1000. All of this black stuff on the stone that's steel from the, very, from the last knife that we sharpened. So we want to clean that out. The stone is made up of a bunch of little valleys and peaks. When the valleys get filled up with steel, we want to either use a Nagura stone to clean them out or our lapping plate. Either one will do the job. We like to flatten our stone every time in between knives. So we're just going to do a quick pass with the Atoma plate. And clean that off. It's important to clean this slurry off when you're just sharpening in a, a nice clean secondary bevel. We always want to make sure that our synthetic stones are clean when we're sharpening a a clean bevel like this. The slurry is meant more for getting into nooks and crannies when we're doing a thinning job. And we'll talk much more about that in our coming videos. So we're gonna do the exact same method as when we sharpened with the 320 grit stone, but we're gonna spend a little bit less time on this stone. We're still looking for a burr, but not quite as aggressive as that 320 grit burr. So starting on the outside of the knife, we are just going to focus on that heel section first, then the belly and tip. I try to travel around the stone as much as possible to try to uh, get some even wear going on. So I can feel a consistent burr all along that heel section. So let's just move to the belly and then the tip. Remembering to angle our elbow in the air. And we can feel a consistent burr all along that edge now. Not quite as aggressive as that 320, but it's definitely there. Now we're going to just do the exact same thing on the other side. We have a consistent burr all along this side now. 
you can see during the light test that it's reflecting just a little bit shinier. So we're going to try to clean up that burr now with our stropping motion. And at this point, we don't touch the ceramic rod anymore. We just go straight to our leather strop and we use the suede side to help clean that burr up. You can also use the strop if you don't feel comfortable doing the long strokes like that. You can do the exact same thing that as when we are sharpening, break the knife down into three sections. Just strop the heel first, then the belly, and then the tip. At this point, the knife is cutting really nicely and we could technically use this knife and it would operate quite well for us, but we want to take it a step further and smooth it out with a fine stone. This will help cut through whatever food we're cutting just a little bit smoother and it'll also give us better edge retention. So today we're just going to smooth out the edge with a 3000 Suhiro stone. This will also, also polish it up and make it look really nice and shiny. Again, we're flattening our stones in between knives every time. If you let it go too long, then you have a, quite a job in front of you if your stone ends up looking like this. That's also why a lot of people get scratches all along their blade face. It's because they have a dished out stone and every time they pass the knife, then the corners will catch and scratch. So on the 3000 stone, we're going to spend even less time because we're just trying to polish it up. We're still looking for a burr, but it's going to be really, really small compared to the 1000 grit, but we still want to move the steel just a tiny bit. So just like the first two stones, we're going to do the exact same thing, focusing on one section of the knife at a time. You can feel a tiny burr there. And if you listen closely, you can hear a popping sound. That's the tiny little micro burr that we didn't clean up with the strop. Now it's polishing it off with the 3000 stone. To the tip, exact same thing. Angle your elbow up. There's a consistent burr all along this edge now, so we're just going to flip it over and polish the inside of the knife. And the tip. It's a consistent burr all along that side. The edge is looking nice and polished. So now we'll strop the knife on the stone. And we'll give it a final polish on our strop. 
So we'll do a fresh little treatment of the Koyo green compound. This is uh, chromium oxide, and it just helps clean up that extra little micro burr and gives your edge a little bit of zip. We never apply too much pressure when we're putting this stuff on the suede side. Just a light coat and strop. And we clean up that oxide off the edge. And give it a strop on the leather side. All right, thanks for tuning in everyone. Today we're also gonna be doing a little giveaway for this 1000 grit Syrac stone from Suhiro. We think that the 1000 grit stone is one of the most important stones in our knife sharpening kit and definitely one of the workhorses. We wanna know what your favorite medium stone is and why. We hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.